Hi, my name is Gina Zedlick. I'm Deputy Chief of Staff to the Governor. Thank you for joining me as I lay out the framework we will use as we approach phase two of the Governor's A Safe and Strong Oregon Plan. We have the opportunity to rebuild because we are meeting the public health metrics laid out by public health experts. The governor's goals for reopening have not changed as we seek to enter phase two. We must continue to minimize hospitalizations and deaths. In other words, we must seek to minimize serious cases of COVID-19. To do this, we must minimize risks to frontline workers and protest, protect those at highest risk of severe illness, especially in communities of color. This allows us to avoid overwhelming our health systems and allow people to safely return to work to support their families and gather in ways that preserve our communities and cultures. The governor chose a regional and phased approach to reopening our state. At each juncture, we must evaluate how the disease is progressing. The process for a county to enter phase two is simple and requires a letter of request to the governor. Once that letter is received, the following metrics will be evaluated. First, any county wishing to enter phase two must continue to meet the phase one requirements, including a declining prevalence of the disease, an adequate number of contact tracers in that community who are reflective of that community. The county must maintain a minimum testing regimen and have adequate isolation and quarantine facilities. The county must also have sufficient hospital surge capacity and sufficient personal protective equipment for hospitals and first responders. In addition, counties must meet additional criteria to enter phase two. Each county must spend at least 21 days in phase one. They may apply to the governor's office anytime after 14 days in phase one. A county's contact tracing must be both effective and timely. That, that is, the county must be tracing a minimum of 95% of all new cases within 24 hours, and a minimum of 70% of new cases must be traced to an existing positive case. Meeting these contact tracing requirements are important so that the county is demonstrating that any new outbreak of cases will be able to be contained. We all want to have this in place so that when there is an outbreak in the future, local public health in the county can identify it quickly and prevent additional spread, thereby allowing businesses and schools to stay open. As you can see from this map, almost all of Oregon's counties have entered phase one. As a reminder, in Oregon's phase reopening, guidance is given on a statewide basis for each phase. Today, only one county, Multnomah County, our largest and most urban, remains at what we call the baseline phase. Some guidance issued for the baseline phase, like guidance related to the use of face coverings and transit, apply throughout all the phases. Other guidance changes with each phase. For example, in phase one, restaurants could, be, could begin offering sit-down dining. In the baseline phase, civic, cultural, and religious gatherings were limited to 25 people and social and recreational gatherings limited to 10. Travel in the baseline phase is limited to essential purposes only and remote work is required to the maximum extent possible. We have developed guidance for museums and zoos that allows them to open everywhere statewide. Additionally, we are excited to know that many of our collegiate athletes will return to train in mid-June. Phase one guidance is included here as a refresher. In phase one, gatherings for civic, cultural, and religious purposes remain at 25, and social and recreational may also gather up to 25 from 10. Local travel is allowed, and working remotely continues to be required to the maximum extent possible. Phase one allowed limited sector openings as well, including sit-down service in restaurants, gyms, shopping centers, and malls, and personal services like hair salons are also allowed to resume under specific safety protocols. 
In phase two, the gathering limits expand, moving to a limit of 50 indoors and 100 outdoors. Although some exceptions allow certain gatherings up to 250. I will expand on this in another, in another slide. Increased travel is permitted in phase two, commensurate with the increased opening. And working remotely remains recommended, but is no longer required. Phase two also allows new openings of certain sectors, including bowling and venues like movie theaters. Specific guidance has been issued for venues, including churches and theaters, allowing up to 250 people to gather according to occupancy standards and physical distancing. Indoor and outdoor activities like swimming pools, arcades, and batting cages have also, also have specified guidance for physical distancing and sanitization. Again, all guidance issued by the Oregon Health Authority is on the coronavirus.oregon.gov website. Restaurants and bars may expand service in phase two as well. Their curfew is extended to midnight from 10 p.m. in phase one, and they can increase their footprint for table space outdoors and utilize partitions as well. Recreational sports may also resume play if a non-contact sport and sports courts like tennis and pickleball may also resume. Again, specific guidance for each of these has been issued by OHA. And finally, to parents' delight, swimming pools may also reopen with sanitization and physical distancing guidelines. I'd like to spend some time describing the new gathering limits and how they apply across sectors. So first, as a reminder, strict gathering limits in any phase, even at baseline, never apply to some services and sectors, including things like schools, hospitals, workplaces, grocery stores, or other retail, banks, or credit unions. That remains unchanged in phase two. However, as I've mentioned, in phase one, gatherings are limited to 25. That standard expands from 25 to a limit of 50 people indoors and 100 outdoors in phase two. This is laid out in specific OHA guidance on gatherings and applies to swimming pools, backyard weddings, recreational sports, et cetera. Only if a specific exception is made in guidance can a venue allow up to 250 people to gather. Right now, only restaurants, gyms, and venues like theaters and churches may exceed the 50 or 100 limit. Each of these venues must determine a new COVID op occupancy, which means the ability to physically distance people not in the same party, at least six feet apart, not to exceed the occupancy of the building, or 250, whichever is less. So again, theaters and churches are a good example of this. Their buildings may vary in size dramatically. However, if a space is large enough to accommodate physically distanced groups and individuals, and they adhere to all the guidelines, they may allow not more than 250 people to gather, regardless of purpose. Again, all guidance is published online and may be easily referenced at coronavirus.oregon.gov. Finally, we are hopeful to see counties reopening thoughtfully and safely. Although we look forward to entering phase three, we must wait for a widely available treatment or vaccine. Until then, we will continue to monitor the disease and may adjust guidance as necessary. Thank you for your time.